So I'm Nick Arnold, I'm a director in our private client team. Um, and yes, I deal with quite a few yachts that are at the top end, but that isn't what we're here to talk about. Um, we're talking about yachts that form the, the main body of, of the tourism industry and where we want to entice, um, yes, rich, but maybe not super rich. Um, and you'll see in these slides, we've got a brackets around the U, which represents the ultra, and perhaps we're just looking for the middle. So um, the key that we're all talking about is how to attract uh, people into our industry and keep them here. Um, and in order to do that, to support each other in whatever area of this industry that we're in, and we've heard about that quite a lot already, um, the, the, the geographical support from uh, Montenegro and Albania, Croatia and, and, and Greece has been very encouraging. Um, and I think that that is a, a theme that we should carry, carry across. Um, so I'm talking about a, a couple of different sections. I'm looking at uh, private clients in general and the world that they're facing and um, then how the industry is going to deal with that. How do I turn my slides across? Is it this? Button, Thank you. Um, so, our fir first slide, the changing world of, of private clients. Um, it's changing massively. I, I've, I've put a stream of um, acronyms up there for you, which um, you'll be pleased to hear I am not going to take you through. But um, the disclosure regimes that um, our private clients are facing across the globe are coming thick and fast. Um, and in the round, um, they all mean um, we are going to um, ask you to tell us stuff about your lives and we are going to share it amongst ourselves. Um, and that isn't just an EU-wide thing, it's a global thing. Um, and it is with the drive to transparency um, about who has their money where, where they're using it, how they're using it, um, and frankly, has it been taxed correctly. So the drive to put um, otherwise um, confidential information onto registers um, into th that um, traditionally play quite a big role in the private client space um, is, is increasing. So if you're the owner um, of a yacht um, that's, that's in a company or a property or, or any other asset, it's highly likely that going forward you're going to be able to have to declare that to um, a tax authority. Um, and harmonization being a point across the EU, what, people, what the tax authorities do with that information, what they collect, how they share it, um, is a big debate within the private client space. But the information sharing is, is there. Um, the Paradise Papers and the Panama Papers um, have been a massive thing um, in the private client industry. They, they, they weren't just a um, journalistic um, interest point. Um, notwithstanding the fact that it made good television and, and even I felt a little bit sorry for um, a certain gentleman who was chased around a conference centre, probably not too dissimilar to the one we'll have here, um, while a journalist asked him tricky questions about what, how he kept his money. Um, he didn't have any good answers, but it, it was um, a <laughs> pretty tough way to be interviewed. Um, but the knock-on effects of, of, of those um, explorers into um, structuring within the private client space have had tangible um, knock-on effects. I've got clients um, who haven't been able to raise finance because um, the way they own their assets um, is now in jurisdictions which uh, banks within the EU don't want to work with, and it's driving change. Um, the other thing that, the, that these explorers have exposed is, is how we deal with tax um, in the super yacht space, and some of the arrangements that have been in place to encourage um, VAT to be uh, reduced or navigated, um, excuse the pun, um, and whether that actually meets with EU regulations and, and how we, we think about it, and, and that has had a lot of attention recently. Um, and substance. Substance is a thing throughout the private client space which um, all, all um, practitioners, practitioners are having to deal with. You can't have a letterbox company sitting on an offshore Caribbean island anymore without it really um, doing something um, proper with the right people in the right place doing the right thing um, the, uh, to structure something in, in, a, in a veiled um, company. It, it, it's not going to stack up in the future. 
So that is the world that the private clients are having to face. And in terms of their reaction to it, um, we're seeing the level of governance in the private client space really increasing. Um, they are responding to some of these pressures by getting their act together. And they're getting their act together on a cross a generational basis. And they are thinking a lot more about who are we, how do we feel about the world around us, who, what do we stand for as a family, and how do we want to be seen by the world. Um, the attitudes to paying tax are playing a big role in that. The attitude to the sort of assets that you have in your family and how the world perceives that is playing a role. Reputation management, do I want to be photographed um, whizzing around the Mediterranean on a gas guzzling uh, a, a yacht or not? And if I do, how does that fit in with my family ethos? Um, and that sort of debate is, is happening all, all the time in, in, in families that um, uh, care about their legacy. So that's something that we need to reflect in the industry itself. We don't want this industry to uh, represent the top end of bling um, and something that might damage the, dep the reputation of a family or not sit right with the next generation who look at the world in a different way. And I've seen an increasing amount of interest. We've got sustainability and environmental impact on our agenda. Um, and that is playing a really key role in our industry to show the uh, next generation who we want to entice in that this is something that we care about. So we've talked about the private clients, some of the pressures that they have on them and then some of the things that they are demanding of us. Um, and what does that mean for um, the tourism uh, sector? Um, I don't have a timer anymore, so I have no idea no <laughs> if I'm going over or not. So someone has to shout at me. Um, uh, so I've got three things, uh, really, that I thought were, were key in our, um, in our endeavor to make our industry as sustainable as possible and entice in and keep as many people as possible. So the tax authorities, um, we've, we've touched on it slightly here. Um, the harmonization is key. Um, we, we can't make all of the countries in the EU and across the globe have the same tax systems, of course. But a recognition that we are all, let's say, in it together, that we have four different jurisdictions we talked about this morning, that we would like yachts to be able to freely move between. After all, the people that are in them are very mobile um, in terms of their lives and their footprint across the globe. And of course, the yachts that they're playing with are very mobile. So let's recognize that we are not just jurisdiction by jurisdiction, fighting our own corner, wanting to be better than the others. I'm going to present the lowest tax rate in the globe so that I can get people here. Let's be a little bit more sympathetic to the fact that we, ha we have to do this together. So consistency and harmony, communication and discussion is going to help um, bring us together on, on, on one stage a bit better. Um, the attention to detail in the second bullet point is more about what are the rules. They're there for a reason, and I'm seeing an increasing degree of the application of rules that have been around for ages, but perhaps people didn't apply them or care about them or take them seriously. And tax authorities now are. At the end of the day, we've been through financial challenges. Tax revenues are very important. If there are rules out there to collect um, revenues, then they are starting to be applied more and more, whereas perhaps they hadn't been in the past. Um, and the industry, we have to recognize that as an industry. And while something like VAT is super important, um, and I will come back to that, um, we need, it's not the only tax. Um, it's not the only tax that the industry needs to think about in terms of the people that are in it, but it's not the only tax that the um, owners of the, these yachts need to think about. They have a global footprint. We need to be um, sympathetic to how uh, the yacht fits into their overall lives um, and their holistic tax footprint. Um, and if we only focus on VAT, mistakes will be made, clients will get upset, they will leave the industry. So we need to pull it all together in one place. And clients are forcing us to do that. Um, some of the work that I've done over the last year, I wouldn't believe that we would be doing it five years ago. Clients coming to me and saying, I want you to unpick 
that thing. I want you to do tax due diligence on that yacht before I buy it. It's right up there at the top of my list of things I'm worrying about. This is relatively new territory. Um, we've got under the bonnet of tax arrangements um, recently, whereas in the past, they would just be accepted. No one would question them. But that's not where we're going. The clients are getting more sophisticated. They are asking more questions, and they're expecting a higher level of um, uh, better answers to the questions they're making. So I think this is my last slide, in case anyone is worrying. Um, so the industry itself, what do we need to do to respond to the client demands and the, um, the, the, the tax authority policy, um, the drive for policy change? Um, work together. Um, I know that when I first entered the industry, I think there was a little bit of suspicion. You know, what, what is this tax advisor doing here? She's going to disrupt everything and tell us we're all wrong. Well, no, it's not. It's about very slowly raising the bar of the governance of what we do and doing it together. We need to look across jurisdictional lines. We need to focus on doing the right thing in the right place. I've, I've, I've observed some really great behavior. We use that word, good behavior, bad behavior. I've observed some really great behavior in some of the sectors, some of the yacht brokers, some of the um, other service providers who really want to up their game take tax seriously because I think they're starting to recognize that if they do that, the experience of their um, yacht buyers is better and they will look better and they will keep those clients in a sustainable way. Um, that is a really positive, um, sustainable move. Um, don't let the tax tail wag the dog. This is, this is a pleasure industry. It's a serious industry. It's incredibly complicated. It really is more complicated than I ever might have thought. But if we start off with tax as a primary thing, in terms of clients' motivations, it doesn't usually go well. We've got to start off with um, owning a yacht, making it fit within their world in a way that works for them, and then let's just make sure they do the right thing with regards to tax. Let's not make tax an optional thing. It's not optional. It's really important bedrock of any economic system. And if bits of it in pieces in places feel optional, it um, drives bad behavior, it drives inconsistency, it drives confusion um, and animosity sometimes. So um, let's take this wonderful industry seriously um, and work together to do that. Thank you very much. Excellent.